In this installment, we're going to learn about the selection tools in Photoshop um, CC 2019. I have an image already loaded up here into Photoshop, and I'm going to start with the marquee tools. The rectangular and elliptical marquee tools will select in squares or circles. These single rows refer to pixels, so they're more for like web-based work. But if I chose the rectangular, I'm going to choose the rectangular marquee tool. I can click and drag to select. Now, let's say I'm focusing on the tiger's head. I want to I want to select the tiger's head, and I want to take it out of my image. So now I have the tiger's head selected. Now, why would you select something? Well, you would select something so that you can grab it to move it. Here I am moving the tiger's head. Or you would select something so that you can make adjustments to it, right? Like maybe I wanted to make it bright now or darker. And now in this particular case, like a, a square is not the not ideal, right? I would have to go in and be more specific about my selection. And so I'm going to show you some better tools to use. Now, while I'm at it, I'm also going to be going through my, I want you to notice my history panel. My history panel keeps track of all the things that I've done since I've opened my image. I can also go back by doing Command Z on the keyboard if you're using a Mac, and that'll bring you back um, Control Z if you are using a PC. Um, I'm also going to be using my navigator panel and keyboard shortcuts to zoom in and out because I, there are some great keyboard shortcuts. If you are using the navigator, you can use this red box to kind of zoom in on certain areas or sections of the piece as well. Okay, so I did the mark the marquees. The next set is um, lasso tool. So you have a free draw lasso tool, which will allow you to go through and kind of free draw an image. So I'm going to use a combination of all three of these tools to select this tiger, right? So I'm going to kind of go in here and I'm, I'm kind of going ahead and drawing around. And then um, let's say I did this and oops, I kind of forgot a piece over there. I'm going to go back and I'm going to fix that. Um, I've been using the mouse and, and tablets and stuff to do selections for a while. So my hand is pretty steady, but this could be pretty difficult for a first time selector, right? Someone who's selected with the mouse. Um, I can add to or subtract from my selection. Option is the subtract. So I can go through and subtract part of my image that I don't want. And then shift is the add. So I can, if I notice how that little plus and minus pops up. So I can add to my selection as well. If there's a piece that I missed or a piece that I didn't select very well. The next selection tool you have here is the polygonal lasso tool. The polygonal lasso tool selects things in straight lines. So let me go back to my original. Like if I were to go through and start selecting this tiger like this, the only th this this would be good for items that had sh square edges. So an item like this that I'm trying to select, a head that's got a lot of rounded shapes, this might not work so well. Right, but, but you know what it would work really well for is for this area of the hair of the tiger right here. This would be an excellent selection tool to go in here and, and like kind of get that hairy outer texture that it, the edge of his face has, his whiskers have. Now, if at any time I was done selecting or if I didn't want to finish this, um, I would double click boop, boop, and Photoshop is going to finish off the selection. Think of it as... Like if you were cutting something out from paper, right? You you would at some point if you stopped cutting, you just you would tear it and it would kind of complete the cut itself. So make sure that you complete an entire circuit. And if you don't complete an entire circuit, you can go and switch to a different selection tool. So here I am with the regular old lasso, the free draw, and I'm adding to my selection by kind of using this tool to to add, build upon what I already had done and select it. Another great selection tool. I'm gonna I'm gonna expand my selection here to the rest of the tiger. Um, Pull myself over like this. I'm using keyboard shortcuts to zoom in and out so you can see how my navigator is cha changing. Command plus zooms in, command minus zooms out. This hand tool gives me this red square that I can kind of fine tune what I'm looking at or what I'm selecting. Um, the hand tool kind of moves the image around here as well and if I grab the space bar when I'm zoomed in I can grab that hand tool and move my image around from there as well. So the other lasso tool I want to show you is called the magnetic lasso. And I'm going to hold shift because I want to add to the selection I've already got. So the magnetic lasso will define the edge. It's defining the edge of this item by looking for contrast and color changes. Now the faster I go, the less accurate my selection is going to be. And if any time I'm out of range, I can, I can grab that hand tool, switch over, and then continue selecting my, 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 my tiger here. Um, for ease of demonstration, I'm going to kind of finish them off by coming back. When you finish a shape, right, when you go back to where you started, you're going to get a little circle that will pop up. And that means that you've completed the selection. You've completed the shape. So actually, oh, I hate to do that, but I just got rid of my whole thing. Let me do that again. I'm going to do this, show you how. Let me zoom in. 
if I were to go around here and like, let's say I'm selecting this area, this is a magnetic lasso, and I go back to where I started, that little circle that pops up, that means I've completed an entire shape um, and it's ready to go in terms of the selection. All right. So those are great selection tools. They're especially great for fine tuning a selection, but ideally the best selection tool to use is the quick selection tool. In the quick selection tool, make sure you set it plus and not minus in the options bar here. Um, but the, in the quick selection tool, I can paint over. So I'm like painting over the tiger here, painting over the parts of the tiger that I want to keep. Photoshop is determining, like, see, I can do this whole section. Photoshop is looking at the contrast and the changes between the tiger and the background and determining what part of the image I need to take. This is a very powerful selection tool. Now, if you notice what happened, it just selected all of this area inside here. So I can then switch to minus. I could also hold option, right, or alt and, and get that as well. And here I am subtracting this chunk that just took, that I got too much of, right? So I could switch back to plus, or I could use those keyboard shortcuts, right? Plus shift in alt or option. Now, ideally, you would go through and get the whole thing, and then if you needed to, add to or subtract from it, kind of fine tune the selection, you can do that in there as well. I'm only going to use the front half of my tiger, I think, for my demo here. Let me zoom out a little bit. All right, so I've successfully s selected the tiger as best I feel I could. I probably could do better if I spent some more time, but for demonstration's sake, I'm going to move on. Um, the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to select inverse. Inverse is opposite. This is everything outside of that tiger shape. So let me just zoom out so you can give any idea what I mean. I mean everything in the background of the the, the part of the image that I just selected. And I'm going to do a keyboard shortcut that fills it with a blank. So I'm going to do a command delete because I'm going to create a new composition here based on my selections. So command delete fills behind the background with this color that's in the background here. So whatever color I chose to use, right? Like if I used a blue or whatever it was, command delete is going to fill it in with that background. I actually like the black. So I'm going to go back to black. All right, so now I'm going to go select inverse again, go back to my tiger, and now you'll notice because the tiger is within, I have my transformation controls. So I'm going to go ahead and stretch him out and I kind of stick him over to the side so he kind of looks like he's jumping into my picture here. This um, key right here is going to apply the transformation commit, or you can double click on it to apply the trans. And you'll know you've applied it when that solid line goes to a, a, a dotted line. Now the reason why I wanted to do that, let me do command D, so select, deselect or Command-D is the keyboard shortcut, is I want to show you this last selection tool, which is the magic wand. The magic wand selects everything of one color. So if I click in this black area, it's going to select all of the black that I just pumped into the background because it's one color. So if you need to go, if you needed to select something that was on a solid color background or you needed to select that solid color background again, that is a great, very handy tool because I could even go, you know, I selected the background and I go select inverse again. Now I got the tiger again. I grab my, now I can move it into a new document or I can experiment with where it is. I'm going to kind of lay it down here at the bottom. Command D to deselect. So having the background selected, though, let me just select that solid background. Shift adds, remember, so I can even do it with this tool. So I'm shift adding to select more of the black. It's getting a little bit of the tiger. So I could play with the tolerance. The tolerance is how much of the color it's selecting. So it's selecting 32 pixels up and 32 pixels down from this black color that's right there. So if I increase or decrease this, let's say I decrease it to 15. So when I go to click, it's going to get a lot less of that image. And actually, it's picking up where the old tiger was. There must be a little halo of it there. Let me go back to 30 then. Let me try that again. And there we go. That's kind of a more still getting some of the tiger, but that's okay. All right. So what? why would I want the, the solid background selected? Well, I can have some fun with kind of like brushes and stuff. You can create a whole new composition just from selections and some brushes. So thank you for watching. Hope this was helpful.